Notre Dame at Ohio State, Saturday night, 7.30 Eastern time kick. This is an ABC game. These are wallet danger games. We're going to just create some new terminology this year because I'm bored with the old stuff. The game's going to be what it is. That's how every game is. It just, it's, it'll be what it'll be. But sometimes when you have these kind of marquee games to open the season, what if you have it figured out in April? What if whatever the final score ends up being on this game, what if you had it figured out in April? Do you know anyone, yourself included, that r arrives at a conclusion on a final score in April and then you let May and June and July and August go by? That's a third of a year if stats and info is correct. And you don't change your mind? Very rarely. You've got to be very disciplined to stick with it. So what happens is your wallet gets in danger because you already had it figured out and then you talk yourself out of the right stance because you start listening to position groups get turned from very good into superhuman and you get the Xbox crowd who convinces you that Ohio State's going to hang 850 yards passing Saturday night against a really good defensive team and that's really not how reality plays out. So be careful. I'm going to show you what our model thinks about this game. I'm going, to I'm going to give you a final score, or I'm going to give you a prediction at least. So just be careful. There are three paths that this thing could take. Number one, of course, Ohio State rolls, and all's well in Columbus. And hey, Marcus Freeman still got a top five recruiting class, so we'll be better down the road. Number two, you just have the Notre Dame upset. That would be a really, really big stunner. Not the biggest shock in the world, but a really big stunner. But then there's this third one that would lead to the most stupid range of national conversation in the world and that national and world's kind of redundant and that is if Notre Dame loses but keeps it close and I'll reference that again in a second but remember how we do these types of games when we have these big point spreads what we try and do is ask ourselves if the upset were to happen how would it happen so we get the one million dollar question asked and then answered in short order Saturday night million dollar question around this game and this Ohio State program has been of course how improved is this defense going to be? And the answer to that question, at least we'll start to get a sense of this Saturday, I start thinking about how Notre Dame would approach this game. And I don't think you have to go back very far. Why would they go back any further than asking, what did Michigan do that worked so well? Well, what Michigan did is they ran the ball 41 times and threw it 14 times. Now, how big a godsend would that be for Notre Dame if they started chipping away and they just started feeling things out in the run game Saturday night. And all of a sudden, they're getting five and six yards a chunk. And they really don't have to put an inordinate amount of the load on Tyler Buckner's shoulders. How great would that be? Maybe a little unexpected, but how great would that be? Uh, you're going to have to put them in obvious passing downs. They're not going to put themselves there. So that's the first thing. And you'll find out a lot about the run defense. And that's part of, the, it's part of what Jim Knowles was brought in to rectify. But then the other aspect of that is everything about that home atmosphere. You know, everything about what you're getting geared up to experience there in Columbus, it's built on being able to affect that offense of Notre Dame's on third down. Man, if they're not really getting to third down very often, it's a different world. And Ohio State fans remember all too well what that Oregon game felt like last year. So that's the first thing. That's where we'll start to learn about this Jim Knowles defense a little bit. Secondly, how much can Ohio State go after the lack of proven depth in that Notre Dame secondary. I think they've got reason to feel pretty good at their one corner spot, one, two corner spots, they're fine. Problem is they won't face another team all year, nor will anyone in all likelihood, that has the stable of receivers and the quarterback to expose your third, fourth, and fifth options in your defensive backfield, and Ohio State's got it. Now, how deep into the game do we get before you really start to see those mismatches unfold? I don't know. Um, how many possessions is Ohio State getting in the first half? That's largely dependent on the question that I just asked about how well they limit Notre Dame on the ground and force them into obvious third and long passing situations. But I, I feel like a couple of those critical factors are going to, over the span of four quarters, tilt Ohio State's way. Now let me show you what the model thinks about this game because you know what Vegas already thinks. Vegas, as of this moment at Caesars, has Ohio State minus 17. The model, which is proprietary, it's ours, we run our own data, we do our own sets, it spat out Ohio State minus 18 and a half as its line. Now, what I ended up landing on is I ended up kind of bucking the model. I don't, there's not a rule that says I have to go with the model. So if that thing's sitting at 17, I would actually slightly lean Notre Dame in the points. I think the number's about right. I would take Ohio State to win straight up. Um, but if we go back for just a second with me, 
go back to that third scenario. The, I mean, I'm telling you, the conversation around this game has a chance to be all-time stupid. If Notre Dame loses this game, but it's close, here's how this will go. You go into the game, and you got a bunch of people saying Notre Dame's overrated, Ohio State by 90, and then Ohio State wins the game, but they win it by 8. And then you've got a crowd that says, never mind, these are frauds, Buckeyes going nowhere further than the Big Ten, if even the Big Ten championship game. And that same crowd that starts dragging Ohio State for no good reason other than winning a big-time football game will simultaneously tell you, but also Notre Dame's still a choke artist in big moments. They're still overrated, even though no one rates them above Ohio State. Therefore, if they lose to them close, it should actually be a feather in their cap. You will have some really fantastically stupid conversation if Notre Dame's competitive in this game, but then loses. It's as sure as the sun rising tomorrow. Why do I know this? Because we've seen it happen with them before. So give me, give me if I had to take one, give me Notre Dame to cover, give me Ohio State to win.